<laughs> this is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy web show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a lady who takes pet planning very seriously. I'll tell you all about her and introduce you as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink with a lifelong animal lover an advocate and rescuer, dog walker, pet sitter, author, entrepreneur, dog person, coffee lover, fitness fanatic, Illinoisan, expert pet pre-planner who will go on a rant on Facebook or YouTube about pet related topics at least once a month. Christine Siana Calabrese. Did I pronounce that okay? Calabrese, but it's close enough. Calabrese. You see, I went all Italian on you. Welcome, Christine. It's so nice to have you on the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I am excited to get to know you a little bit better. We're friends on Facebook, and I know you go live and you talk about pet products that you like. And today we're talking about a pet product that you created. So I'm excited to do that. But before we go any further, Anybody participating in our drinking game today, anytime you hear this word, make sure you take a drink, but please drink responsibly, be over 21 or whatever legal age there is in (laughs) your country and always drink responsibly. What are you drinking today, Christine? Coffee. Coffee, she's not a drinker. I'm actually having coffee too. Um, And I did not put any booze in it, but I did put it in my Real Housewives of El Paso cup. Because I'm a big Bravo lover and no, we don't have a Real Housewives of El Paso, but I, I got this as a gift last year for my birthday and I drink out of it every single day. Tell me about your shirt. Oh, I don't know if you can see the whole thing. It just says, what about the dog? Which is going to be the title of this show because that is the title of your one of your two books. But that leads me to our perfect segue to our first game today because I always do a game to introduce the episode, usually something to do with the expert that I'm speaking to. And today's game is called What About the Dog? And it's dog related trivia. Okay, I'm ready. All right, okay. awesome. Okay. okay. So basically, I'm just going to ask you questions about dogs and you're going to answer them. And that's it. That's what the trivia is. All right. What do I win? Um, nothing. What kind of game is this? (laughs) It's just a fun game to play. Um, and honestly, (laughs) we'll just, we're going to have to, we'll see how much of a true dog lover you are. Um, these are actually really quite easy with the except, no, that's not true. These are not easy. You're, you're gonna do great. Like, you're supposed to say no. You win a dog. Did you want more yeah, dogs? Um, all right. First one. Dog noses are wet to help absorb scent chemicals. True or false? Oh Lord. False. It's true. According to Vet Street, that's how they uh, experience the chemicals in their environment. Hmm. This one's fun. The Beatles song, A Day in the Life, has a frequency only dogs can hear. True or false? False. It's true. Oh, what the hell? (laughs) According to Paul McCartney, he added a frequency only dogs could hear to the end of that song. Why? I don't know, but that's what the trivia says. Hmm. This one's interesting and kind of depressing, to be honest. Three dogs survived the Titanic sinking. True or false? Oh oh my God. I hope so. They did, but it's kind of depressing because they were in first class. And so it was two Pomeranians and a Pekingese. And one of them was smuggled like a baby. Like she was like the mom, the owner, pretended it was a baby so she could evacuate with it. Oh my God. Isn't that so sad and depressing and that's, really interesting? That's crazy. Right? I mean, that we even know this? I would so do that too. I mean, yeah, you don't blame the lady. No. So I'm not leaving my dog in this sinking ship. Right? Most Dalmatians are deaf in one ear. True or false? False. You're so right. It's only 30%, but still it's a lot. 
That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? According to Vetstri, 30% of Dalmatians are deaf in one ear. Hmm. Next one. The Rhodesian Ridgeback is the oldest dog breed in the world. False. It is false. The Saluki dates back to 329 BC and were kept as pets in ancient Egypt. I don't even know what a Saluki looks like. I have to look it up. Last one. Dogs have okay. three eyelids. True or false? True. It's true. The third eyelid is called the haw, and it's responsible for keeping the eye protected and lubricated. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. I knew that. I that's good. That's awesome. Well, I mean, you wrote a whole book with all these awesome tips and all these like background, all this background information. So tell me about your books and what inspired you to write them? Uh, basically, I have dogs. I have a dog walking business and this is kind of kind of morbid, kind of different, but uh, are you familiar with Dr. Atkins from the Atkins diet? Yes, I certainly am. Okay. Do you know how he passed? He had, did he have heart disease? No, he was a, he was actually a cardiologist. Oh, okay. But, uh, he actually slipped and fell on the ice and cracked his head and died. I had no idea. I thought it was health related. I didn't know it was a freak accident like that. Yeah. It was a, yeah. So I, you know, it's very treacherous for dog walkers in the winter time. So I was out one year and um, I just thought spontaneously one day, what happened if I fell and killed myself? I had at the time three dogs at home. And I said, someone would eventually come to my house, find these three dogs and not know what to do with them, where to send them, anything about them. So I instantly started writing a journal just in a spiral notebook. And that's how it started. That is awesome. So I have the books right here. Thank you so much for sending them to me. I think they're amazing. There is what about the dog and what about the cat? And so you are a professional pet sitter. Do you offer these to your clients um like maybe at the meet and greet yes. because a yes. lot of this is like stuff you could use as a pet sitter for your visits yes absolutely obviously the 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 dark side the dark part of like the fact that we're all gonna pass one day and we want to make plans mm -hmm. for our pets that's an inspiration mm -hmm. but did, did the detail that you went into is that inspired by your experience as a pet sitter because I feel like as a former pet sitter I'm seeing a lot of like client paperwork in here um it, the the book i mean it was a real work in progress it it's it was uh just added on to over like the course of a year like yeah. whenever i thought it was done it wasn't done i thought about something else and i was like oh what about oh what about and this and that so it was definitely a, a work in no, it's, I love it because it's so detailed. And I think that that's when you buy something like this to help you plan for your pets. Like you want somebody else to have thought of all the things that you are inevitably missing. So I think mm -hmm. that your, your experience as a professional pet sitter really impacted the quality of all and like the detail that you went into with this. I don't know. I don't know so much about that. I, I think it was just being a neurotic pet owner. <laughs> just, just things that I would want seriously that I would want people to know about my dogs for sure are your dogs do your dogs have any kind of special needs or um anything that really like you wanted to hone in on um I, I'm partial to seniors and if you see me like moving oddly like this way I have uh my latest addition Bosco who is 16 years old he's uh He's a bit needy, so I'm I'm trying to tend to him while I'm talking to you because all of a sudden he spontaneously decided he wants to be needy. Um, there's always dogs running around this joint. So uh, in answer to your question, um, I think just seniors need a little extra, a little extra attention, a little extra detail. Absolutely. I, is that the, 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 like that growling I hear? Is that him? Yes. That's Bosco. He's just Hi, being, Bosco. Mouth, he's just being <laughs> mouthy. Uh, you know, it's not lunchtime. It's not, he doesn't have to go out. I, I don't know what his deal is right now. <laughs> 
So uh, did you work with an attorney or did you study like the law of estate planning? Because there's a lot of detail in here as to the legal documents involved in preparing for something to happen to somebody and leaving a pet behind. So funny you said that because originally the book was going to be co-authored by my estate planning attorney, but uh, honestly, she couldn't get her stuff together in time. And she kept, she kept making me delay it and delay it, delay it. So I cut all her stuff out of the book. <laughs> Seriously, I, if it was up to her, if I was, st I'd still be waiting on her. Well, that's, that's attorneys, right? This, I, I just interviewed an attorney for a completely unrelated topic. And she said that they are all about the CYA, right? The cover your Mm -hmm. And so she was like, yeah, we dig deep because we want to cover our butts. Um, but that, yeah, that tends to lead to some kind of um, delay every once in a while. So tell me about how often you think pet parents need to update these. Like, let's say that I filled this oh. out today for Titan, for Radar or for Kira. Mm -hmm. And how often would I need to update it? Oh my God, I'm finding myself updating this thing because like I said, with seniors, with their medication, every time the medication changes, I'm like, oh, wait, I gotta, you know, so it really depends on how high maintenance your dog is. I would think that's the main thing, the diet and the medication, anything veterinary that's going to be updated, everything else stays pretty much the same. So just for logistical reasons, do you recommend people use a pencil to fill this out? <laughs> it's a, it's a, a very good, uh, good point because I did mine in pen and I have lots <laughs> of scratches and arrows and, but I did, there are blank pages in there. There are notes at the end. So if you run out of room, you can go to the notes at the end of the chapter and put it there. That is so cool. Yeah. No, you have thought of everything in this book. I'm like, I am going to not only fill it out for my dogs, but I'm going to order one for my sister who lives in Spain and she's single and has a dog and we don't know his day to day. I mean, we're in a totally different country. So like what mm. vaccines he's had, what, you know, any, any his, of his care, we don't know. We don't even know what vet he goes to. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll tell you this. Don't, you can't sit, you cannot sit down and do this book in one shot. Okay you have to do it in increments because it's a lot. I tried to sit down and do it in one shot and I, it was so funny after it was published, I'm trying to fill it out and I'm like, oh my God, this is like a lot. <laughs> It is a lot. It's a lot, but in a good way, because like, if you have one book per pet, like basically like, you know, you could put a little sticker with the pet's name on it, keep them all together and just grab right. it when there's an update. I feel like that would be so easy. I, instead of, you know, I have a, this is my office and I have a fi file cabinet over here to my left and finding anything in there is impossible because, you know, mm -hmm. once you have a household and children and multiple pets, like there's so much paperwork. So this makes it so much easier. You want to keep that visible. So like mine are out on my, uh, my ledge, I have a wall that divides my rooms. So I make sure it's out in public view. The outside of the book, like you said, is labeled with the dog's name on the outside of the book. But Perfect. each, but the dog book is made for two dogs. If you have two that you know can be rehomed to one person, then that one person can just take that one book. So um, you've thought cat, of everything. Well, the cat book covers four cats because people had, tend to have more cats at one time than dogs. I don't know. So same thing. I mean, it's, it all depends on where you think your pets are gonna go. That is amazing. So I wanna dig deeper into the cat thing as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and I'm talking to a very, or what did you call yourself? a neurotic uh, pet parent. <laughs> I'm talking to a neurotic pet parent who took that neuroses and created these amazingly helpful pre-planning books for pets in the case that anything terrible should happen to their guardians, their pet parents. And I will say that we, when I was running the WAG pack, I, I had a pet sitting dog walking business in Northern Virginia for 12 and a half years before COVID hit, we did lose a client on vacation. She was mm. married and had left the dog and the, the, she had actually taken the dog 
they left the cat at home. We were cat sitting for them. And when we got an update from the client was to say, can we extend visits? Because my wife has had a traumatic injury and we don't know when we're coming home. And she never came home, unfortunately. So these things do happen. This was a woman in her forties who was having a great time on vacation and had an injury with a boat or something like that. So these things do happen and it's tragic and it's awful. And luckily she had a spouse who, you know, took over the care of the pet, but had it happened to both of them or Mm -hmm. had she not had a partner? Um, Most people don't tell their siblings or friends, like what pet sitting service they're using. Some people, you know, like there's a lot of things that could happen if you haven't planned accordingly. And these books make it so easy to do that, to not even think about it, just like answer questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's so, so valuable. So before we go any further though, I want to play a second game with you because we have to give cats some love. You are a self-described dog person and I only own dogs. I'm highly allergic to cats, but that doesn't mean I won't have a cat. I've had cats before and I will probably have them again. Um, but we have to give the cats some love. So this game, just like the first one is based off of the title of your book. What about the cat? And it is based on a national geographic online quiz. And I think this one's kind of even easier than the first one. So ready? Okay. All right. First question. How many whiskers does the average cat have on each side of its face? And this is multiple choice. A, one, B, three, C, 12, D, 5,007. Can I have a lifeline? It's not 5,007. Is it three? It's 12. Come on. That sounds like a lot, right? According to this, okay, true or false, the average cat can spend two thirds of its life sleeping. True. It absolutely is true. When does a cat purr? This is on multiple choice. A, when it cares for its kittens. B, when it needs comfort. C, when it feels content. Or D, all of the above. C. It's all of the above. Oh, it's all of the above? Yeah, apparently they purr when they're caring for their kittens, when they need comfort, and when they feel content. And I just learned from one of my guests, uh, Dr. Edward Bassenthwaite, that he suspects that they heal themselves with their purr. Mm -hmm. That it's like a self-soothing in a a physiological way, technique or method or whatever it is. Um, Because apparently we don't know what causes purring, which is fascinating. What is the average number of kittens in a litter? A, one to two, B, three to five, C, eight to 10, D, 12 to 14. Eight to 10? B, three to five. All right, I'm going home. <laughs> well, you don't, you're not an expert on how many babies kitten, cats can have. I'm a dog <laughs> person. <laughs> what? This one's interesting. What was the punishment for killing a cat in ancient Egypt? Another multiple choice. A, nine lashes with a cat tail. B, nine days in the stockade. C, death. D, nine years of exile. Oh goodness. Uh, The first one, the lashes? It's death. Oh wow. Because remember in, I guess in, in ancient Egypt, they considered cats like gods. Oh, oh yeah. Which is why they still think they're God. So it's super interesting that you should say that the What About the Cat book um, is for four cats. That seems like a lot of cats to rehome to mm-hmm. one person who may not have cats. So have you seen that happen where like four cats have to go to like one person who's never had cats before? Does that happen? Well, I know. I, I know people that have the book that have four or more cats and they know which cats they can cluster and give away. Uh, I guess because the cat people that I know are really, really cat people, like show cats and things like that. So their people are cat people. Got it. So it's not unreasonable for them, but I guess for the average person, it would be a lot. 
So like, if you have a person in your life that can, you know, rise to the occasion and take four cats and it not be too much or just impossible for them, then absolutely. But maybe it would be a good recommendation for people to maybe give two to one family member, right. two to another family member. Right. And this book allows you to do that because I mean, I want to just dig into it just a little bit because I think it's so fascinating. So veterinary information, and these are not all of them. This is just what I'm looking up. Special needs. Uh, dislikes and phobias, legal documents, uh, beloved antics and alluring behavior, diet and feeding while left alone, uh, grooming, sleeping and lounging, potty habits. I mean, this is complete, complete in the car. Um, and when it comes to cats, like that's important to know, you can't just put a cat in the car and somebody who doesn't have experience with cats needs to know, how am I supposed to get this cat from this house to the friends who's, you know, 500 miles away? Like this exactly. all covers this. And I just find it so awesome. And to be honest with you, I haven't heard about this until you and I friended each other on Facebook. And when I was working in the pet care industry, I would have told all of my clients to get these because these, I mean, it's, it's just such an invaluable tool and all the thought process is done for you. Have you considered partnering with like the national association of professional pet sitters or pet sitters international to like get these out to pet parents? NAPS I actually belong to, and they did promote the, what about the dog to their sitters? Um, it's funny you said that because I was just going to follow up and see if we ever did anything or we're going to do anything with the cat book. Yeah, you really should because I feel like even right now with uh, pet sitters and dog walkers having such a hard time, you know, staying busy because of COVID. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to be like that forever and things are looking up, but like right now might be a good time for them to even like buy these books at wholesale yes. and sell them for, you know, to help their business a little bit. That's what I said. As soon as COVID hit, I was like, hey, this is the perfect opportunity. But then, you know, sometimes people don't want to be too morbid, but you don't have to take the morbid angle of it either. It could be used as a pet sitting journal. Exactly. And that's what I see here. I, as you know, from my experience, pet sitting, this would have been so valuable to be like, oh, uh, I can't find the cat. Let me go see about these lounging habits and read over here where I might find the cat without bothering the person who's vacationing. Right. Especially if they're like overseas or, you know, in the islands or something, you know, or a, a good one is the dog won't eat or the cat won't eat. Well, flip open, to, you know, the diet section. What's the trick? What's the problem? Absolutely. For sure. And you do a lot of um, Facebook lives and stuff about other products that you love. Do you find that people, f that pet parents see the, the, the kind of dark angle on it or do they see the helpful angle of it? Um, you know what? No one has told me I haven't had any complaints about the the morbid angle so I just get people that say it's a real peace of mind it gives them peace of mind it certainly should because it really is very complete I remember when COVID started and the my business was still we were still maintaining it right and mm -hmm. I remember it was like a Friday night and I was I personally had just had a baby and I was worried right because we didn't know what COVID was and we didn't know what it meant. And I remember posting in a financial literacy group, like I need to create a will like tonight. Like, is there <laughs> something that online, like a, like a template that right. I can use. And I was re recommended a, uh, an app that I was able to do like an, like a very quick living will just adding, and it adds your children and it adds your pets and it adds all this stuff. And I remember sharing that app because I thought it was so practical, you know, for like my family mm -hmm. to just have something that I could print out and get notarized and give to my family. Um, and it included, you know, my spouse, my children, my whatever. I shared about this app on my Facebook page for my business. And like, nobody commented, nobody liked it. Like it got no engagement. And I was like, maybe it was too depressing. Like all too I serious. Said was, yeah. Maybe it was too serious. Maybe people were yeah. like, I, I mentally not in a place where I can right. take this on right now. But I feel like now that we're getting on the other side of COVID and people have seen the, why these tools are so important because we don't know what's coming. 
I feel like now people are going to be more receptive to be like, okay, you know what? Yeah. We've seen a pandemic. Like we need to plan. Mm, I think you're optimistic. Oh uh, yeah. I think, I think the people who skirt the topic are always going to skirt the topic, whether they're in the thick of it or out of it, you Avoiders, know, so I, right? get, so I get people that either like are absolutely gaga about the books and the concept and you're either all in or you're all not. Yeah. I'm a planner. So like for me, this is like, this is like perfect because I don't have to do the, my biggest problem with planning, especially when you're overwhelmed with the world that we live in is trying to remember all the things that I need to do, right. All the, the items that I need to cover. Like I tell my husband, Hey, can you do this, that, and the other? And I in, in, inevitably forget part of it because there's so much we're managing. So the fact that you've done the thinking for me, yeah. this is fantastic. I just, I just have to fill in the blanks. It's wonderful. Um, it's funny. You should say that though, but it's true. Like some people are, are just not there. This is just not their cup of tea. Um, and that's okay too. Right. But they need to maybe think about it from the pet's perspective. Like we want to have something in place, maybe not a whole book that you filled out, but maybe the, the, the key points, which would be like the top three parts of the book that you would say, okay, you're not a planner. Don't go into detail, but make sure you fill out these three, four sections. The veterinary information, because if nothing else, as long as you know who the vet is, the vet will be able to help navigate you know, the, the conditions of the dogs that that person wouldn't know about. So I would say that's number one. Perfect. Absolutely. And then, and then you have certifications in here. What do you mean by certifications? There are dogs that are, uh, you know, like service dogs or therapy dogs, or have certain titles because they're extra special. You know, I paid $5 million for this breed and is related to the, you know, Yes, yes, Golden, yes. <laughs> all that craziness. Uh, so just things like that. I will say that the book is actually, I'm, I'm focusing again, because I'm a planner on all of the fill in the blanks and all the stuff you've put in there, but it's so helpful. You also went to the trouble of, fi- of, of listing toward the end, animal sanctuaries with rehoming options. So right. like you could, you, you have phone numbers and websites of So that if somebody, let's say, heaven forbid, something happened to you, somebody who may not be in the pet industry could step in and your family members could step in and say, oh, I don't know anybody, but like here, this, these are, these are resources for me where I can start and see who can take these cats. If, if there's nobody internally in the family who can take them. Well, that was designed for people who right off the bat know that they don't have anybody you know, and it's sad, but it's true. A lot of people, you know, they know they can't rely on their family. They know, you know, their kids are useless in that arena and just won't do right by their pets. So at least you can kind of research in advance and will your animals to like best friends in Utah. You can will your animals to an organization? Uh, It's called a bequest. I mean, you can set it up. So in your will, you can leave an organization X amount of dollars, you sign some paperwork and that that organization is supposed to take your animal, you know, for the duration uh, with your donation. Oh my gosh, that's so good to know. I mean, yeah, if you don't have a person to, what is it, a bequest? It's called a bequest. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can bequest. That's awesome. I mean, that's so good to know. And I, you know, I, I feel it when, especially when you have multiple pets. I mean, if something happened to me and my husband and we're already, we already have children to leave to somebody, I don't Mm -hmm. know where the three pets would be able to go. So yeah, that's a really good option. Um, Well, in the, in the front of the book, there is a section that says my animals will go to this person. There is a secondary person underneath that. So if by the time this rolls around, you've contacted the, reached out to the first person and they say, ah, things have changed. I've moved. I have kids of my own. I've got 10 dogs myself. I can't. Now you can jump to number two. That is awesome. And it's just to add, because I did always, when I was, again, I'm a planner. And when I was running the WAG pack, I had in my policies like pet guardianship, and they would have to fill it out the names of the people that they wanted us to contact in case they never came back from vacation, heaven forbid. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. And we always asked for that name, but we also said, make sure this person knows and make sure this person has agreed. So I'm sure you say this in the book, but anybody watching or listening, please make sure that if you choose a guardian, you let them know, make them aware, have their buy-in, make them understand what the plan is. Let them know about this book if you have it so that they're prepared to take over and uh, consent to it. On the back of both books, I put in bold, bold lettering, the whole, if I could narrow it down to like a catchphrase, decide, discuss, provide. So you want to decide who your caregiver will be. You want to discuss it out loud, like you said, with that person so they know. And then provide means provide them the book and or preferably provide them some money yes. to care for your animals. Yes, absolutely. That's wonderful. I think you've done a great job with this book. I'm surprised that not more people are talking about it, especially after learning our le the lessons that we've learned during COVID. How can our viewers and listeners buy their own book? Um, and how can they learn more about you? The websites for the books. The books are sold on Amazon, but it's a real tricky, goofy way to try to find it on Amazon. So I tell people go right to the book websites, which is whataboutthedogbook.com or whataboutthecatbook.com. And that takes you to Amazon where you can get a book. That is perfect. And you have a pet sitting business in Illinois in the suburb of Chicago. What is the name of your business in case anybody's in that local area? It's the Oaklawn area, Southwest suburbs. It is Good Karma Pet Services. That is awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me today. I want to propose a toast to you and your neuroses who, who are helping all <laughs> of the pet parents out there. And I'd like to propose a toast to our executive producer, Mark Winter, for making this show possible to our listeners on Pet Life Radio and our viewers on YouTube. Here's to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> to learn more about covered in pet hair, please visit coveredinpethair.com or petliferadio.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.